hello guy good morning or good evening to everyone so today in this tutorials in this mainframe tutorial we are going to see a what are the different terminologies that we will be uh, coming across while working with the mainframe so let's start with the mainframe definition so mainframe is a large computer that we have studied or that we came to know in, in our school days so that's exactly this is a large computer this is used for large business calculations or business processing at the back end and uh, these are these mainframes are used by many of the industrial applications uh, such as like insurance in insurance it has been it is being used in the banking finance retail pharmacy scientific uh, scientific research and anywhere so these has that's the reason we call it as a large computer so banking the name itself uh, banking it requires a lot of transactions that need to be stored and that need to be uh, processed uh, let us take an, uh, a bank that has a uh, branches throughout worldwide and uh, in uh, in many different countries it has and they have to process their data with a large volume right it, obviously it has a large volume it needs to be pro processed and same with the insurance or finance or pharmacy or it can be a stock exchange retail many so wherever there is a big data I mean to say the big volume of data is there so there the mainframe is there right so that's the main the first terminology that I want to discuss and the next next wanted to discuss is the TSO so oh, this is called as a time sharing option uh, so this we will be coming across in more I mean you'll be listening this word when you start practicing this mainframe just wanted to give you some brief idea about this uh, TSA stands for time sharing options and it allows your computer to interact with the administrative mainframe computer that means uh, you may use TSA to execute both interactive and batch programs so it interacts the mainframe computer or it may interacts with the OS on the mainframe computer so what is the different what is the operating system that we use is a ZOS the operating system that we use is ZOS is the operating system that we are going to use on mainframe uh, and uh, this is specific to an IBM mainframe this is specific to IBM mainframe okay whatever I'm talking or whatever I will be discussing in the tutorial so this is completely related to an IBM mainframe computer so the operating so that system that we use is ZOS zero downtime operating system and uh, what are the front end we use is a CICS that is called as a customer information control system and we will be looking into this more details in the coming upcoming tutorials and the back end we use DB2 IMSDP and the file system that we use is VZAM and the application language to develop an applications for the mainframe we use a language called as a COBOL, PLBAV1, Assembler and uh, Rex sometime uh, so this so these are the different uh, languages that we can use on mainframe and we are calling it as an application language and the scripting language is called as a JCL this is this is defined as a job control language job controlling language and uh, this is mainly used what is the program you write in order to execute that programs in the batch mode then we go for a scripting language that is called as a JCL so front end CICS back end DB2 IMS DB file system VZAM application language COBOL scripting language as a JCL then ISPF another important terminology that will be coming across is ISPF that is interactive system productivity uh, facility so this is nothing but uh, this is uh, the primary screen uh, when I say interactive system productivity facility so this is the primary screen that whatever the screen that you are seeing this is called as a ISPF screen so you can see various uh, options and uh, what are the different software that are being installed on this particular system and uh, different other options for example you can see the QMF DB2 so and it looks like uh, these are installed on the system and various other option menus that we go we are going to work and we can easily identify that okay the next thing is uh, user ID you need to have an user ID created and normally the administrator will create the user ID whenever 
you get an access to the mainframe system and it normally with will be the eight bytes and uh, the first two bytes may be related to the organization and then followed by the last name and first name this is uh, this is the example user ID I'm created for the XYZ company first two bytes are XY and then followed by the first name and the last name for the three bytes or it can be a seven bytes to eight bytes and uh, normally 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 7 to uh, sometimes 7 bytes or 8 bytes we can take it and uh, mm, the next is a password the password is minimum a password also can be 8 bytes maximum and it can be minimum of 3 4 and uh, also depends upon the standard that administrator will decide uh, and it's a case insensitive it's a case insensitive okay uh, then emulator that we use, I mean TN three two seven zero Hummingbird or any other uh, emulator that can be used emulator. So, what is an emulator? In order to connect to the main system, you need to install these software uh, to get interacted with the main system. Okay, Hummingbird um, Room Vista or any other uh, there are various emulator tools that we can use in order to connect to the mainframe system so this is the sample I mean this is the screen that you are seeing so this is the I mean I'm connecting through 3N3 and T0 terminal I mean emulator in order to interact with the mainframe system so this is the another option that we can uh, can say the, uh, that we are going to use here and uh, let me s let us see uh, other different other utilities that we can see or I mean on the mainframe system okay so maybe I can continue this in the next video thank you so much for watching this you can stop this